Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Sadlier School Live. I'm Kimberly Woods, and I'm so happy to bring back the wonderful Sarah Wrestler Wright, aka Vocab Gal. Hello, Sarah. Hi, Kimberly. Thanks for being with us here on Monday, and I'm really, really excited for us to dive into today's topic because we are going to walk through ways kids can virtually connect with family and friends from the comfort of their home. And some of these fun ways that they can connect also entail learning. So Sarah, let's start diving into today's topic. Um, so one of the things you and I had talked about was that last week on our live, we, you had mentioned your kids had been hopping onto live and they had been not on to live, but on chats like Zoom or Google Hangouts where they're live with friends and family and they're actually playing games with them. And we talked about how some of our principal games that we actually have on our website actually make great games that you could play virtually with friends and family. So let's walk through first some of those games. Awesome. Thanks, Kimberly. Uh my daughter is in second grade now and I'm thrilled because she is reading. And so we've been playing a lot of Oranges to Oranges. Uh, and so again, this is on the Sadlier School blog. I uh, figured out how to come over here to uh, virtual events and blogs when you come to resources. And this is the very first link because I love games. Games are a great way to learn. Uh, and it's not too arduous when we're, we're playing, we're having fun, and then we're reviewing vocabulary in the process. I love it. And I just want to let everybody know that this oranges to oranges game that we're about to walk you through, I'm dropping into the comments on this video so you can access it right there. Thanks. Because uh, we've got to get right there. And so basically what I've got here is this is oranges to oranges. And so uh, Rosie is excited because she wants to play too. Um, and so what it is, is it's apples to apples, but instead of using your regular green cards, you're actually going to use um, vocabulary words. And so these obviously you can print out, um, but if you just have a list of vocabulary words, and if you need a list of vocabulary words that are appropriate um, over here in vocabulary, um, we can come on down and you can see all the different options. And so these different vocabulary workshops uh, and activities. So for uh, depending on the age of your student, you can come here and it'll give you a list of vocabulary words. So I'm going to use that list of vocabulary words. And then I have, we have actual apples to apples and apples to apples junior cards in a minute. Um, so what we've got going on is right now everybody gets a hand of red cards. If you are playing virtually with someone, they can get their own apples to apples set. Or Kimberly, if you and I were playing um, and you don't have your own apples to apples, I would simply deal you out cards or in a chat okay. feature, I can tell you the words on the cards. Um, my favorite way to play apples to apples, now oranges to oranges for our blog, um, is to do it apple turnover style is what they call it. And so what that means is that you're actually justifying each of your answers, which means that you're also explaining the words as you go. Um, so for example, if we're all playing to the word adulterated, which means polluted or contaminated, uh, I'm going to tell you, Kimberly, that your words include eye patch, hippopotamus, uh, and toasted marshmallows. So of those, what do you think is the most adulterated? Oh, that one's hard. I'm going to go with eye patch. All right. So why is that adulterated? Because what if you have pink eye and it gets Ooh. contaminated and you have an eye patch on it? Right. Or it's adulterating your face, right? Yeah. Adulterating your face. Yep. So, and then for example, I've got octopus mosquito bites and learning to swim. So really the only thing I could pick is mosquito bites because mosquito bites adulterate your skin. Yep, I love it, that's fun. And so really it doesn't take a lot of work, which I really appreciate. And you're working with words that the students um, 
have to know. And so just kind of pull up a vocabulary list, explain to everybody what the first word means, and then de deal out some cards to everybody. And it gets goofy and it gets silly. And that's the point is that we're having some fun. We're laughing about these words. And by the time everyone has said that this is that mosquito bites adulterate your skin and therefore is the best answer or um, that the eye patch adulterates your face and therefore is the best answer. We've said adulterated four or five times. Yes, which is really good. That repetition is good for the kids to practice and to also hear. Um, as we were talking, before this live too, Sarah, you and I had talked about how incorporating games into learning at home is really helpful for kids, especially when they're just kind of feeling like, I don't want to learn right now. I don't want to do school. Incorporating the games into this routine or this schedule is great because kids don't even realize sometimes that they're learning. To them, it's just having fun. Exactly. And so that's what I love is because it becomes frustrating to us all to have to um, be the teacher for grade levels that you're not necessarily accustomed to teaching. Uh, and so in this case, for me, I get to teach uh, words, I get to teach ideas through things that, that we're enjoying playing. And so you can see that up at the top, we've got all these different options for vocabulary, including on a roll, which just includes dice. So grab the dice out of whatever game you have and then roll and depending on what number you roll, you have to do different things for um, the, the number. Uh, vocabulary bingo. Super fun, super easy. You can just write down a chart of words. Uh, and this is fun to play with family members. And so maybe each family member has um, adds five words to the bingo card. And so if you've got a 25 word bingo card, um, every family member contributes five words. And then you can kind of explain what do these words mean? Um, and people can take turns pulling one of their words out and then seeing where your, your bingo chart gets. Um, Sarah, I just want to let everybody know too, I dropped a link to this into the chat on Facebook Live. So if they want to access this article and browse more through these activities and games, they can do so at that link. Perfect. And uh, my daughter has really been getting into Candyland. And so this is vocabulary land. And if you don't have the resources to actually print it out, you can get out your old Candyland game. And then every time you land on a space, pull out a vocab word and say, okay, you have to use that word in a phrase or uh, do something goofy based on what the vocabulary word means. Uh, so you can actually use the games you already have. If you have Scrabble at home, if you have Yahtzee at home, if you have a checkerboard at home, go ahead and get that out. And you can actually, if you're playing virtually with someone, they each have that checkerboard or that you can show them your screen and then one person moves and then the other person doesn't. And I don't know about you, Kimberly, but my mom has been doing a lot of work with my kids. And so she shares her screen and then kind of has the kids answer for her. So there's one person who's manipulating the screen while the other person is answering. Oh, how fun. I love that idea. Uh, now, so uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't know if you want to stop your screen share and we can kind of yeah. keep talking here. You had also been mentioning some other ways your kids were connecting with grandparents online. Uh, so you had just mentioned that they've been doing games like this. Mm -hmm. Have there been other ways that they've been able to kind of hang out and learn at the same time? So my son is really into music. And so he and his grandfather have been listening to things together. And um, he sent him some music so that he can start learning some of the good old rock and roll from the 1970s. And then my dad can talk about history. Um, of music. Spotify, like they're creating Spotify playlists, oh. or they're actually getting on a chat and hanging out and like listening to it live. Yeah, they're really kind of just FaceTiming and listening to it live, but I feel like a Spotify would be great so that you can listen to more music and then come back and say, here's what I liked and here's what I didn't like. I love it. And I love that it's almost like a book club, but with music where they're talking through the songs and they could even look into the history of the music and really try to apply learning in that way. Yeah, and, and when it's with other people, I feel like the more that I farm this out, the more the students, my, my own children are responding um, because it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, now you'd also mentioned something that your daughter had been doing with your mom, I believe. Yeah, so, so um, my mom has been doing a lot of um, 
uh, reading and math activities together. Um, my stepmother has been doing um, some cooking with Gigi, as it were. And so they've been doing some cooking lessons, which also involves math. Yes, it does. So, so again, it's, um, it's just ways to break up the day and kind of have scheduled times with different people, uh, which has been really helpful. And then even just kind of having a book club and being able to, you know, have different people read the same book. Razi has been using Hoopla a lot, um, uh -huh. which is digital books through your, your public library. And so then, you know, somebody else can read that same book at the same time and have a conversation. Oh, how cool. I'll look into that. So a lot of the public libraries are offering that. Right. And so public libraries, your public library should often have Libby, which is one app for getting virtual books and virtual audiobooks. Another app that's very popular is Hoopla. Um, they each carry their own ebooks and their own uh, audiobooks. There's some crossover, but a lot of times it's different publishers. Hoopla operates like Netflix in that everyone can have five or six titles at a time. Whereas mm -hmm. with Libby by Overdrive, Overdrive is the parent company, um, yep. there's only so many copies of a certain book. But also right now they're doing um, kind of the big read. Uh, so Libby has some unlimited titles. And I saw that Harry Potter audiobooks for the month Ooh. of April, I think are unlimited through Libby by Overdrive. Uh, so definitely check those out because those are my favorite right. audiobooks. Speaking of Harry Potter, I did a Harry Potter escape room last week with my daughter that was so fun and that would be another great activity that kids could do online with friends and family you could all hop into a zoom and go through this little break or escape room together so I'll drop a link to that in the chat as well for those who are interested awesome. um I'm gonna grab that right now and then we'll wrap up or is there any other like things that your kids have been doing that you think would be really interesting to share here before we wrap up I just think that uh, it doesn't have to be family necessarily. It can be friends, it can be uh, neighbors, uh, and and just the more, obviously we all know that the more we connect, the better. Uh, and so uh, Rosie's Brownie Troop is trying to have virtual meetings every couple of weeks. And so we're gonna have a meeting tomorrow. And so the more that those happen, um, the, the more that we can continue learning and and not being afraid to make it look different uh, and not have, uh, I listened to a uh, podcast and the, the actual homeschool mom said she had to let go of the idea that homeschooling should look like school and yeah. then it was a lot more successful. And so that's what I'm trying to hold on to is that it doesn't have to feel like school. It can be different. Yep. I love that. Thank you for those closing thoughts. And I just want to remind all of you that we will be back tomorrow, not Sarah, she will be back later this week, but tomorrow I will be back here with Dr. Matthew Bayranavond, and we were going to be live at 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 12 o'clock Pacific, so if you can make it back out here and join us, we'd love to have you and have you in on the conversation. So we hope you all have a wonderful day, and we will see you later. Bye.